the new government of national unity has grown to 10 parties. We get an update from Neil De Beer, the president of the United Independent Movement. Good morning, Neil. Yeah, good morning. It reminds me of a song, Make the Circle Bigger. And uh, Apparently, it can still get bigger. <laughs> I think it's the last desperate need of a seat before the music stops. And uh, I think I think there are there are very few surprises of Rise and Zanzi getting in because, I mean, they didn't get what they needed to, but they still have to deliver. A lot of money was pumped in there, so you would expect something needed to be delivered. Well, we've got the ANC now, the DA, the PA, the IFP, good, the PAC, FF+, plus, the UDM, Rise Mzanzi, as you said, and Al Jama. I think, if I counted correctly, three of those parties defected from the Progressive Caucus of the Economic Freedom Fighters. Yeah, I think power makes a person deli. I think what we've got right now is interesting, is to see the parties that are now joining and look at their representation in the National Assembly. It looks like a terrible score on a very dull and dundrum cricket match. One, 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 three, two, one. So, so a lot of, a lot of, Power mongery, getting onto the base of saying we have no say in Parliament because of the seat allocation. Let's get into the government of national unity and let's see what we can do there because at the end of the day that gives them a better uh, platform. The UIM itself, as you know, when the multi-party charter came to the forefront, that was one of the reasons that I steered us into it is because if you join the collective of a bigger entity, then obviously you get the the spotlight, you get the media, you get the coverage, you get your voice heard. And I think there's nothing different to this. I think the smaller entities are getting off. What is, though, going to murky the water and what will put more blood in the street is that now you have to accommodate it. Because the invitation was given as an open invitation, and that invitation's window is closing slowly but surely, and I think the last cats are trying to get into this house before the thunder comes down. But the more parties joining uh, the government of national unity, the less power the Democratic Alliance is going to have in the GNU. Surely that's not what they envisaged when they signed, and surely... That is not representative of um, what Helen Ziller stated subsequently. Chris, I always say it's great to train on a target practice platform because the target doesn't shoot back. You know, I, I, I come from a situation where when you when you train, you train as if you are live. So, so when you go into a system of combat, you can only for so long, shoot at a plastic or a paper target. Because when you go into combat, that person shoots back. It's a total different pressure. Because when you are training to get into a combat situation, that's level one. But when you get a combat situation, trust me, the life of you changes. If I can use the same analogy, speaking about a government of national unity, talking about sharing of power, who gets what, is one thing. But when you actually get into the actual operation of the government of national unity, then you better be right. This country is sitting on a knife's edge waiting now for this president who is now being reappointed to appoint his cabinet and to bloody well get on with it. Because what we as a country need is not a debate and a discussion about your power and my power and I get and you don't get. It is about putting the right people into those seats that we need for this country to use a massive speedboat change And the longer we are delaying it, the longer the people of this country are suffering. It is from the inception already a circus. 
We have from the inception a couple of clowns that should be there and a couple of clowns that were told that you will never come back, but they're there again. So it's, it's a massive circus, and I remain a wolf. And the difference between a wolf and a lion within a circus is I don't see wolves acting in circuses. But it is a circus. Have, and, and now we have parties that had vowed never ever to work together, stuck together. Yeah, sure, because they've got their own circus. Yeah, that is not a circus. That is a lachwerk and a tyranny. And what you've got is you've got from the inception of them calling the GNU, or as Helen Zeller will say it, a GNU. You are sitting and you are waiting for us to get to battle. But now what we see is we are seeing that there is argument this past week in the definition of the GNU document. So, so, so you would have noticed there was a battle this past week between Helen Ziller and Fukilian Balula, Mr. Fix It Nothing. I mean, if we can't get to the interpretation of the contract that binds us, how are we going to work together in the contract that must make us develop ourselves? So, 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 Rocky start already, not because of the, I think, intention, Chris, the intention of the GNU. I find nothing wrong with it, but I'm finding a massive problem with the people who are taking part in the negotiations of making the GNU work. And it's, it's really that point, you know, when you're about to get the on your marks, get set, that last one. There's been a couple of false starts as far as I'm concerned. What would you say uh, uh, have been the biggest strategic mistakes made since that first agreement was signed? Chris and Afrikaans will probably have to cover. So point one, everybody's trying to cover their ass. You know, sorry, Neil De Beer, straightforward. Does I? Yeah, Tom. They are going to sit there to cover themselves. Then they're going to sit there to ensure that what they are covering has got say. Then they're going to look at the problems if this thing falls apart. And lastly, everybody is covering their own wickets if it falls apart. So let's quickly dig in. Number one, it is my opinion that Cyril Ramaphosa is hugely trying to cover his exit and his forward strategy. Now, when you look at the composition of this, um, of this cabinet, you know, I got 927 WhatsApps last night of a so-called leaked cabinet. You know, uh, uh, this mm. is one of the people, you know, that, that, that sends stuff to me, but he never looks as what he says. I, <laughs> I, you know anybody so, like that? I also got it, Neil, that, that list does not make any sense to me. No, there's two absolute problems with it. So if you have a little bit of IQ, EQ, AQ, and you go down it, you will notice that they've made um, Julius Fricky Malema a minister, and they've also included him and Mashaba. Just those two things will tell you no, no, because... The EFF and Action SA are not in the government of national unity. So there's already a flaw within that ministerial list. It's speculation and it drives one mad. Anyway, I want to quickly tell you the two scenarios that they're sitting with. MK said something very interesting three weeks ago. They said we will not negotiate with the ANC of Cyril Ramaphosa. They didn't say they will not negotiate with the ANC. They clearly said, we will not negotiate with the ANC of Soro Ramaphosa. Ooh, that's interesting. So the question is, anybody else except Soro? So anybody else within the line of power is Paul Bashetile. But now the DA has handed a corruption dossier to the presidency to try and get rid of Paul Bashetile before... That scenario can come into play, surely. What a strike. What a, what a chess move. I get these people are dumb boy. <laughs> you know, the rules are different. We get the pieces of this. Here's the thing. Yeah, some people try to play chess like dumb boy, and then they fail. If you remove Paul Mashitile and you, for example, put a John Stiernaisen in as deputy, it won't, it won't happen. And the reason why is there's twofold. Reason one, if there is ever the point where Cyril falls, 
And this is highly likely because he either doesn't make it to conference or he dabbles on and goes to the final conference, but then he's out in any case because he cannot serve more than two terms constitution. So Paul Machetile, according to tradition and the flow of ANC business, is the president-elect after. But if you look at it, if the ANC wants to defend ANC, not personality, it will not allow the fact that a gentleman called John Steenhuisen, because he is from the DA, to become the deputy president of this country, because automatically, de facto, in all the Latin verbs, if the president is incapacitated, it means that factually, we then have a DA president running this country. Now, in any negotiation, surely the ANC that is not, remember what I told you, who is not fighting to govern but fighting to survive, they will never allow that. They cannot allow that. And you will always notice that the DA has not fought for presidency, Pani. Even in the multi-party charter, it was agreed that the DA was not fighting for presidency. They were fighting for governing the government for the day of the day. So there's this thing of the power scenario in the top six already. And you will notice that, as in my last video that was very well received, the security cluster is something which the ANC will not be negotiating about. And the economic cluster is something seemingly that the DA is not negotiable about. So there you sit. Survival, Covering your backside, making sure you have an exit and actual strategy of running it, and then securing which ebb and flow this government's power will lie. And it's, 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 it's difficult, Chris, because it doesn't just end at national partnership. It's now moving into provincial partnerships, which will then have a de facto domino effect on local governments. Neil, I'm just wondering uh, what impact the hostile rhetoric between Helen Ziller and Mambalula uh, has had on what is happening with the GNU now. Helen's good. I mean, I mean, I mean, we can sit here and we can debate the relevance of Helen Ziller. I know her. I have been around the table with her and I have seen her influence not on governance alone, but when she negotiates, let me tell you something. I say to her one day, no matter what anybody says about Helen Ziller, this woman, an iron woman, I always refer to her as the Thatcher of Africa, is a very, very astute negotiator. But more than that, she understands the power of the word. Did you hear it? Helen Ziller does not just ensure that the written word in an agreement is done. But before it is done, trust me, that lady understands every single Annunciation of every word, every verb, every noun, and the implication of such. So when we, we've seen it, the minute that the ANC signed the prelim agreement of the government of national unity, it's very clear and obvious that someone signed it didn't read it clearly. Because when it came to battle, you automatically saw Helen get up and go, no, 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 nay, 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 nay. Section 24 of this agreement says, but you've got to read section 17. And if you don't, you've got to also understand what section says. When she started reading the agreement, she wasn't reading what the word said. She was telling you the interpretation behind it. So that is where you're going to have the absolute breakdown, the fight, the argument in the GNU 
between the ANC and the DA. The DA does not go into any agreement, trust me, without being 100% clear on where they go. And I don't think the ANC has that capacity. But what is that going to mean for the other parties that are joining now? That some of, some of whom are not welcome there by the DA? Sure, because they didn't read the agreement. So, so you know, again, um, I, I, I must tell you, I'm sitting and I'm looking at this and I'm going, don't you know who you're dealing with? I mean, I mean the I mean, in particular. Are, sure, these are supposed to be people that are astute. Astute? Listen, Chris, this is clear. Every single part of this GNU machine is trying to get this done and they are under pressure because of time. They have to deliver. This is not things that are in Latin et finitum. This can't go on. So, 14 days to present government. Then a couple of days, not because of time pressure, but because of national demand that you get this going, to put cabinet together. Five positions, seven positions, three positions. But I will okay. And then you get this, you've got to deal with this. But at the same time, you have that thunderous dark cloud of the people that are not in this. MK and this new breaking news, which is the same as this ridiculous supposed cabinet list of George Schlope, who's going to enter parliament as a member of MK. Do you understand? They can't. It's not possible. So we get all of these little pieces of salmon thrown into this massive bowl of salad. And people are trying to tell him that this is a fish slide. This is a fish salad. No, it's not. It's a part of. So, so here's the rhetoric. Not only does the government of national unity have to sort itself out, but the thunderous cloud is preparing itself to absolutely disrupt no matter who you put down on the ground. Neil, what does this mean? For stability? Well, it, it means nothing. Because from the outset, this country has been abused, Chris. It is an abused country because we have been abused on so, on so many levels. South Africans are wanting, seeking, praying for the sanity to prevail. But when you have every single move, made by every single party, scrutinized to the negative, not the positive. You cannot but feel do. You know, it's like when you go into a game of rugby, where I have been involved on many levels, as you know, um, and you are the underdog, but you've got the greatest players, but everybody tells you you're not going to make it, you're not going to win, you don't have this. It must, it must play a psychological role on the people that are going to run onto this field of play. We, we have, at this moment, may I call it you, a bit of a sense of euphoria, a sense of this could work because it showed on the markets, Chris. No one can deny that this week, on several IC interviews, on Buzz News with Alec, etc., that the market is reacting quite well to the news of the GNU. But I'm telling you, that has got no asset bearing. It's cosmetic. Because when you say this is going to happen, it will have a cosmetic blimp on the market. But that blimp will have to come down and settle when the news of the GNU factually gets into, into the front line. So yeah, euphoria, we are all talking, but the stability of the government of national unity in the South African context is under so much pressure that my, if you said to me, Neil, if you were involved as an advisor, what would you do? I would say, get on with it. Get on with it. They, they can only be so much time to threaten that we are going forward. We must go forward now. We must stop this now. Because the rumor mongering, the talking, the, the WhatsApps, the messages, the fake news is adding to the pressure 
I think of the people who need to conclude this government of national unity. If he doesn't, this is now Cyril Ramaphosa, if he doesn't announce a cabinet within the next 48 to 72 hours, the matters that are now boiling up, the threats, the innuendos, is going to cause everlasting damage on the way of the government of national unity forward. And I'm sorry, I'll add one more thing. It doesn't help that people within the government of national unity are speaking out and using scenarios like, we don't need the DA, we don't need the DA, we don't need this, we don't need them. If you are speaking like it, it means that someone in your group is already making the calculation why I don't need you. Well, if we're just looking at the number of seats, the way it is the formation of this new government of national unity is going, it may soon not need the DA. Absolutely, uh, Chris, absolutely. You can see the calculations going out on social media. You know, the 196 closer to the 201, we can put that one in and that one and that one. It, you, you know, when you start calculating the factual scenario of when you're in an aircraft, you know, here's something as a person that's a frequent flyer. You know, when you get on an aircraft and you fly, you actually exhilarate it. But later on, you're starting to tick about, do you know that you are flying in a metal tube on something and someone that actually got the lowest quote? What did he leave out? So, you know, we are sitting on this aeroplane called the Government of National Unity. GNU 1457 is wanting to take off. GNU 1457 has got a couple of captains. It's now choosing the stewardesses. And he said, oh, it's there. We, 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 don't, we, we don't know in whose hands we are. All that we bloody know is I want my peanuts. I want my chips. I want my beer. And it's better than the ice uncle. I have never seen a passenger walk onto an aircraft, go to the captain's cabin and say, may I see your pilot's license, please? Yeah, we are. And so we're on this plane. We are the passengers. We paid our ticket. Hey, we paid our ticket. Some of us paid so much that we have got people that represent us that are quite big. But at the end of the day, everybody on that aircraft, praise to your own God that we get home safely. This is a rocky start. This thing is, you know, it's, it's thundering up, we're ready to go, all the passengers are clipped in, and we are sitting and we're seeing the pilots at the front, and everybody kind of talking and saying, listen, who's going to fly? Are you going to fly? I don't know. What do we... Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. We're seeing, the, we're seeing the pilots arguing on top of it, on top of it all. So, and, 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 and I'm telling you that if you're the head stewardess on an aircraft, be the head stewardess. Because I would absolutely have an heart attack if those two pilots die and the head stewardess says, I'll fly. You might be competent, but you're not going to get the confidence from us. So here we are. Question. GNU, will it fly? So so are we, are we going to get this Boeing up? Yeah, are we going to get a couple of air pockets? We are going to get a couple of thunderous clouds and lightning. But I still believe, Chris, in the tenacity, in the hope, and on the will and this word chutzpah of the South African citizen. And where we need to go is we need to go to a better country, a better attitude, and a better will. But if we are starting to sit down and starting to work out this chemical and this chemical coupled with this chemical, does it give you this? then I think we're going to have a very, very rocky flight. I pray not. There are too many kinds of things that are currently adding to minus and plus. And I would say, if I was an advisor to Cyril, an advisor to John, I would say the following. We bought our tickets. We're on the plane. We want you to get into the air. And let's go on to this journey. That's our prayer. Neil, but meanwhile, the DA is also battling racism scandals. And, you know, there's, there's, a, there's definitely an upswell of, of anti-DA sentiment uh, that, you know, is perceiving the party to be a white racist party. 
You know, you know, when we were in the military, we called it smoke grenade. So you get a smoke grenade, you get a stun grenade, and those things are used in effect to take you out of the battle. But they are quite effective. So when you're in a combat situation and you are taking too much fire, you are taking an overwhelming counter from your enemy. You employ then things like stun grenades and smoke grenades, etc. If we use that analogy, the Ronaldo Ghost matter was not a smoke grenade. It was a stun grenade. It went off, it got into the public uh, uh, view, and it automatically moved the debate and the discussion of the government of national unity and whatever was happening in Poly. It moved to racism. Not were they just done with Ronaldo, but they let the smoke grenade off to say, but there's more. Ian Cameron is now the secondary target. And then they publicly said, if we are done with Ronaldo, if we are done with Ian, then the third one is the current deputy speaker. It was so blatant on social media, so blatant, from my point of view, and people sending to me and saying to me what I said last week, where I told you that we've be, we have to be very careful and clear that they are going to go for each other on other ways. They're going to dig up dirt. Did I not say that? They're going to counter attack. They're going to get intelligence and count intelligence on each other. I'm, I'm sure I said that. Our words, our video, our our message was not was not cold, and it started. So so, in this country, Chris, sadly, very sad. When you put the word racism, it's like a little piece of wagyu beef into a total pond of piranha. They go white. And it's not like the detractors don't know that. So you can call anybody anything in this country. But when you say the word racist, it's a, it's a mega bomb. Each one of those has merit, but each one of those has a counter. So the past three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nothing about the GNU was hitting the headline. Everything about racism was getting the spotlight. My opinion, deal with it. I think maybe Chris, people do listen to this program and what me and you say on a Sunday. <laughs> You're because, the one sa saying that. <laughs> Sure, but, but, but when we said last week Sunday... Mm -hmm. Mm. that the only way to deal with the people that are the counter-revolutionaries is to suppress them, to put law enforcement down, and to arrest. I'm very happy to note that, again, our words weren't cold, and this week the Hawks have arrested a man out of Nelspreet who on TikTok and social media was threatening this government and its president. They arrested him. And I hope this is not where that ends. Because I'll say it again and I'll say it every day that I can have an opportunity. The people of this country will not tolerate insubordination. We will not tolerate threats to our stability. We will not listen to people who want to sow such strife and such revolution amongst us. We cannot allow it. We will not allow it, and we must ensure that those and those detractors of our stability, our democracy, that they feel the harshest point of law enforcement, no matter who you are. And this is where we sit now with a DA that is thunderously being attacked now because of its so-called racist insignia inside. But at the same time, we have to look at people that made the same utterances 
on the other side. And I will say, clearly, as I am, I am not afraid to say, there seems to be a little bit of imbalance here. There seems to be a little bit of injustice here. That when you look at the one, the other one is not dealt with harshly on the same platform of hate speech, but some of them even threatening to kill. So, what is for all We are tired of both, and I hope that this will be dealt with in a very, very huge manner, but that it doesn't take away the real target, the real focus of getting this country back to work, Chris. Lastly, Neil, I know you were disappointed that you didn't make it to Parliament, but with everything that's happening now, surely there must be a sense of relief. <laughs> that yeah, I, th- I, th- I think the outside, Chris, where I sit right now is I have an opportunity without fear or favor, without being muted, without being silenced, to speak the truth. When you sit in it, and here I'm, I'm going to give you an absolute great cliche I heard from a guy from the security services. He said to me one day, he said to me, Neil, when a mongoose falls into a pit of cobras, the only prayer you have is that the mongoose remains a mongoose. I am sitting and saying I am disappointed that I can't go add the value in this parliament, that I can't, what I give you every Sunday, go slap it to them and go give them the people's opinion about the truth without fear or without favor. I've been in that pit of cobras. I am happy to declare. I took a couple of nips. I took a couple of bites. I took a couple of hissing. But here's the thing. Neil the Beer remains a mongoose. And I am not scared of these cobras, no matter whom they are. Because some of them are just spitting cobras. And it don't find a spite in spokwabra is that even when the twig goes up and down of a branch, it spits at that. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in a classic position where we can give you the truth, where I can give you my opinion, but I'm not tarnished by being silenced. Not that I would have been if I was in, in any case. Thank you. That was Neil Tapia, the president of United Independent Movement, speaking to Biz News after the latest developments regarding the formation of a government of national unity. And I am Chris Stain. Thank you, Neil.